Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So this time we're gonna focus on the how to study part. If you're interested in part one, I will link it in the description box below. Other than that, I will also link the blog post so you can refer to that for guidance. We're gonna start off with number eight because we ended with number seven previously. This time we're gonna focus on how to study. Number eight is map learning modules or topics to your study plan. So in consideration to the learning method you opt to take, it helps to map out the learning modules to your study plan so you're aware of what you're studying. For example, if you're going to read an ebook, and what you can do is you can skim through the table of contents, go within chapters if preferred, so you get a gist of what to expect. Once you get that overview, you can move on to actually reading the chapters one by one in depth. So in my case, I did use e-learning videos on SAP Learning Hub and in consideration to the SAP Learning Journey, I made out my study plan and mapped those modules. So there are a lot of videos available per module and there are also sub videos within those parent videos, if that makes any sense. I took note of each of them, made an outline, so I get an overview of what I will be studying overall. Number nine is to go through each topic thoroughly. So now that you've mapped those modules to your study plan, you need to put in the work to really read those modules. This is the part where you go through everything. Please do not skip anything. Pay extra attention to emphasize statements and of course consider your study plans for the week, day, or month, however you planned it to be. Number 10 is apply the Pomodoro technique. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. But the concept here is to take study breaks and allow your brain to consume information in short study sessions. So you can read more about this technique in this link over here. But if you want a quick overview, basically, in my case, it doesn't work for me to study for five straight hours. And because of this, I usually opt to take five, 15, 30 minute breaks in between. I relax my brain, I need to have that sort of balance. Now the Pomodoro technique overall consists of 25 to 30 minute study sessions. So divide them into chunks and have 5 to 10 minute study breaks in between. I use this technique but with a slight revision. I did include an image over here. You'll see that my slight revision consists of session 1 two, three, and four. They're all 25 minutes, 25, 25, 25. I have five minute quick breaks in between. And after session number four, that's where I have my long break, which is the 10 minute break. If you complete session one to four, including the long break, you basically have two hours and five minutes down the line of reviewing. And this includes the five minute breaks where you just do nothing, you look at your phone or you lie down or drink water, whichever you prefer. So I do have those breaks in between and it helps my brain relax and try to retain or consume the data in a much more efficient manner. Session five to eight will follow the same approach, 25 minute study sessions and five minutes in between. After session 8, which is the 4th session, there will be a 10 minute break. After that, that is already 4 hours and 10 minutes overall of studying for the day. And if I need to do extra study sprints or anything of the like, I can include session 9 and 10 but with longer breaks. So you'll see that before session 10, I'll have 30 minutes to 1 hour or more length breaks. You don't have to follow this if you find this too tedious but to me I have done this a lot of times and I must say that it helps me retain the information that I learn much better. 
if you're having troubles with the timing, you can utilize this website called Tomato Timer. It's free and it helps remind you when it's time to take a break or stop your study session. Number 11 is apply the fine man technique. It does sound complex, but you'll be surprised at how simple and effective it is. It was coined after this guy named Richard who basically won a Nobel Prize for his work on electrodynamics and the technique was derived from his studying methods. I have itemized the steps down below. First is you pick a topic and study it. So this is your SAP topic. Let's say we're going to study general ledger. And after studying and learning about that topic, let's say you read the chapter, you read the whole module, get a paper and write the topic down as if you're teaching it to somebody. You can write and speak as you go along. Now, the reason why you're going to get a piece of paper and write down the topic, trying to quote-unquote teach another person is because this part will help you realize what areas you still have troubles understanding. So, if ever you have troubles understanding how reconciliation accounts work, then that means you need to go back to studying those areas more. It helps you pinpoint the areas where you have difficulties in. After that, you can repeat it, but use simple words as if you're talking to a child. So you can even use graphics or visual analogy, even make a tree diagram if that's what you prefer. The way you organize the data and how you're going to teach it to somebody using simple words, if you're able to do that, that basically says that you understood the module or the chapter you're trying to learn. You can modify this technique, of course, if you want to focus on the writing part or just the speaking part. The main point is that you should be able to explain the topic you learn to someone else. Not necessarily to another person, you can do it. You can mock it through the paper or speaking to yourself. Number 12 is associate topics to actual experience. So this is a really, really good tip and strategy because honestly having a background is a good thing earlier or in part one of the video i mentioned that part of the considerations for choosing your certification exam is if you already have background in the area the reason why having a background is a good thing is if you want to remember a topic or a concept you can try to link them to actual work experiences it helps you visualize and remember the topic or concept way better than just reading it or going through the videos. Why? Because you have experienced it. Experience goes a long way. For those of you who have little to zero work experience, you can, of course, use the Feynman technique and create a story out of it, even explain it in your own words. You can also utilize hands-on experience on practice SAP systems if you have access to that. This is where you're actually going to do the configurations, customizations, and even transactions that help you obtain that experience. Number 13 is create scenarios. Remember that your goal is to understand and learn the topic rather than just memorizing. We want to avoid memorizing because that is a very passive way to study. So here are some example template scenarios you can use when you're going through the topic. First is you will test the blank functionality, what needs to be set up before this functionality can be used, why is it set up beforehand. Another approach is you have just created a new GL account, will you automatically see the new GL account in the financial statement? Where will you see it? Why will you see it? How will you configure it? So on and so forth. So you'll notice that we have created scenarios and it's consisting of a bunch of follow-up questions that help you build up a story for that functionality. So in a way, it gives you this solid understanding of how things work in SAP. Number 14 is to use digital or old-fashioned flashcards. This is where you're going to try to reinforce the learning by using the flashcards. You can use pieces of paper, sticky notes, 
index cards for the old-fashioned flashcards, whichever you prefer. Or you can use a digital version. So I do make use of an online tool called Quizlet. This is free. So I do have an example screenshot below. This is really high level. For example, I wrote, what is the format of a company code T? You'll see that for my flashcards, on the left side, I have a total of 77. And over here, I get to click on this portion to see the answer once I say it out loud or say it in my head. How does flashcards help? Well, whenever you use flashcards, whichever the approach, digital or, or old-fashioned, it somehow requires you to extract information from your brain. In a way, you're trying to recall instead of just reading. You'll see that when you see this flashcard, you're trying to obtain information, you're trying to recall what the answer is. Is it a four alphanumeric code? So on and so forth. Is it a four alphanumeric code? Is it a six alphanumeric code? So on and so forth. Number 15, lastly, is hands on SAP Live Access. It really helps to execute and do the exercises in an actual SAP system, as well as the configuration. This is provided as SAP Live Access, or if you have a sandbox environment that you can use for learning, you can use that as well. If you're lacking in experience, I did mention this a while ago, this type of practice will help you visualize and do the associations. This will also help you link the concepts and topics that you have learned to your hands-on experience. For those of you who are wondering what SAP Live Access is, you can refer to this link. We're done with the how to study part. For those of you who are curious, what learning materials did I utilize for my SAP S4 HANA certification? I mentioned that I was provided with SAP Learning Hub Access. So it has learning materials ranging from ebooks, e learning options, videos, learning rooms. It even has SAP Live Access. If you're interested in the SAP certification study worksheet that I use, my personal template and how I utilize it, you can go to the link provided. As a summary on how to study, first map your learning modules, chapters, topics to your study plan. Make sure you skim through everything, go over everything, and to get an overview of what you're trying to learn. Number two, this is the time where you go through each topic thoroughly. Please do not skip any module. Number three, you can apply the Pomodoro technique, take study breaks in between. Number four, apply the Feynman technique. This is where you learn the topic try to teach it to someone else, write it down, speak about it, you'll understand which areas you are confused in or having difficulties in, and then you can go back to learning that, and then eventually you can try to explain the topic in simple words as if you're talking to a child, create tree diagrams, graphics, whichever you prefer to help organize the information. Number five, try to associate topics to actual experience. It helps to have a memory that you can quickly remember when you're in the exam. Number six, create scenarios. So you're trying to make stories, trying to understand how the configuration or functionality works. Number seven, use digital or old-fashioned cards. This time we're trying to recall information that we learned, which is a good exercise. Number eight, of course, is to hands-on exercises where you have access to an actual SAP environment. I hope this helps you. I wish you luck with your SAP certification exam preparation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.